Hey, everybody. Welcome back. When I was in Sheridan, Wyoming, I uh, got to see Clay Miller. He's a tool maker and uh, makes a lot of stamping tools and malls and different things. And uh, we've known each other quite a while. I've gotten uh, some basket stamps in the past from him, but he has a new basket stamp set that he's doing. Um, I think a few different styles maybe, um, and a new little process for making them. You can certainly contact him. I'll put a link down in the description to uh, his website and his contact information. But you can get with him on on exactly how he's changed the process. But he, he gave me this set of stamps here and wanted me to try them just to kind of see how they work. I really like them. I've got one of this particular one. It's got like a little, as you see in this in this basket stamp here, it's kind of got a really neat looking little rope um, in the middle of it. But I just wanted to do a quick little review of these tools and, uh, and kind of do some stuff. And I want to show you two different ways that you can do a uh, belt strip with these basket stamps, with any basket stamp, really. Um, we've done a, a video before on running the basket stamp straight down the middle. That's an older video. You can certainly find that on our YouTube channel. But on this video, I'm gonna show you how to do one that's at, the, at an angle like this. That seems to be really popular. A lot of people like the angled basket stamp. I agree as well. It looks a little bit more appealing when it's running at an angle on a belt, and I'll show you how to approach that. And then also, this is an older way of doing a basket stamp that, um, for me, it's older. That, when I first learned how to build saddles in, that, in the saddle shop with Jimmy Plant, he actually showed me how to do this really early on, and he called it an arrowhead basket stamp, basket weave pattern, and it's really pretty, looks good on a belt, and it stamps really fast, so I'm going to show you how to do both of those. So let's get started. Okay, so here's just an inch and a half uh, piece of a belt drop-off here. This is Herman Oak uh, Veg Tan Leather, 9, 10 ounce, and we'll go ahead and take our wing dividers and just make us a borderline on here. And just like you normally would, and then we'll take our swivel knife and go ahead and carve these lines to make our border. And you want to leave yourself enough room, as with everything that you do, so that you have a good spot right in here to do your stitch line. So you just want to be sure that you have enough space in there for your stitching. And this, I'm using about a quarter inch here, a little over a quarter inch. Something like that is usually plenty so that you can groove your stitch line and have room to sew. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center. We're going to do the arrow basket stamp first, arrowhead basket, whatever you want to call it. We'll do that one first. And so we'll find the center of our belt and put a mark. And then we'll set our wing dividers. This will start out just like we did in the earlier video for running the basket stamp straight. And we'll just real lightly hold your hold your wing dividers down. Don't hold them up because you'll scribe a line. You'll see that inside your little arrow. So you want to just lay them down and just make a real faint mark on there. You can see how that's more of just like a burnish line or a rub line. It's not a it's not a scribe. And then we'll pick one of these basket stamps. You can use any size you you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, this size here, which is one up from the smallest one that, that I have here of his set. And what we're going to do is you're just going to start with your stamp. You're wanting to put the front toe of the basket stamp on that center line and the back end, you want it kind of close to your cut line. And it'll take, if you want to just kind of lightly set it in there and then kind of see, you can kind of begin to adjust your angle because you might have to adjust your angle some so that they line up. And so that right there, you'll be able to see it more as I stamp it here. So we've got that first one, and then the next one comes in here. You line it up, and then be sure that your front outside point is touching that center line. If you keep all that straight right there, you get that look like that. And you can see how they're both pointing the same angle, both of the front corners are touching that center line and we'll do that all the way to the point on one side. It's kind of hard basket stamping around this camera. But with basket stamps you want to be sure and get a one good impression and not having to hit it more than once if it po if at all possible less chance of an over stamping on that 
or having it move. Biggest thing with any set stamp is be sure that you're stabilizing that tool very well. I'm squeezing here really tightly with my thumb and forefinger and then stabilizing with my other three fingers to the material. It's going to stabilize that tool straight up and down so that whenever it, you impact it with the maul, it doesn't bounce on you. Because you want it to just go right into the leather, make a good, clean, crisp impression. So as you can see, we're lined up there all the way down the center. So now we will come on the other side and again, I would recommend just kind of to start with, just kind of maybe push it in and make a light impression and then check your next one and make sure that your it lines up on the back with the previous stamp and the front left toe now on the other side lines up with the point of the opposite side of the stamps you just made. And you just go all the way down the center of the belt. So if you notice that, it's making an arrow pointing. Now I would run this pattern from the fold towards the tip. Um, just for layout reasons, I think that would look better. I've seen it run the other direction and to me it always kind of looks funny. So I would definitely run it pointing towards the tip of the belt. And you'll just go all the way down. Matching them up, taking your time, making sure that they line up. So there you can see how it's kind of just a really neat, neat looking pattern. And then we can take our whatever camouflage or shell border you want to use um, and just go along here. You'll notice there's a gap between the edge of the basket stamp and the cut line. We don't necessarily have to worry about that because when we come in with, if you're using a big enough shell border, you can camouflage that in and so there's no reason to try to half tap some of these tools along the edge you can see here they they meet up almost perfectly there's no reason to try to get another stamp in there that that this particular camouflage here will cover all of that and then we'll come over here and do the other side And that's a completed pattern right there. And that looks really nice on a, a, any belt, you know, ranger belt or a regular belt. And depending on the size of your basket stamp, if we were to go with the smaller version of the one that we used, we might have to come back in and do the, the other ones on the side as well. But that's not a problem. Or if you're doing an inch and three quarter belt, you're gonna end up with more of a space between the end of this initial run and the border. And so if you have room and you want to go ahead, you can go ahead and just fill those in along the way with your stamp. If we were using this bigger one, it would reach across there more than enough to just do one row on each side and that would cover. So you can see how fast this one, you could, you could stamp a belt out very quickly using a little larger basket stamp and this type of style design and uh, get that belt stamped real quickly. All right, so now I've got me another little drop-off piece here to just play with, and we're gonna go ahead and do the angle one now, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we'll start that one off the exact same way as we just did, and so we'll set these calipers, or these wing dividers, to our border. Now I'm gonna use the same size basket stamp. And what we're gonna do on this one is we will angle, and this one, gotta kinda play with the angle just a little bit, but we're gonna angle off of this side line here. 
And so what you want to do again is lay one out and just kind of give put a little impression. You don't want it right up against the line. Just come off the line just a little bit. I mean, just a hair and make you an impression. And that way you can change it if you need to. And now you want to line it up with the previous stamp and then make sure that this, the heel of that stamp here is where it was on this one against that borderline. And if that looks accurate, you might have to change the angle of the previous one so that they match. And you want to just take your time on this first run. This one's going to take a little bit more patience here to be sure you get it the first run laid down accurately. And there's probably more than one way to do this. So somebody else might have an easier way. Um, I don't do a lot of basket stamp belts. And so this is the way that I've kind of figured out how to do it. And a lot of it's by just kind of eyeballing it and keeping it straight best you can down the run of the belt. So there you can see we're, we're just matched up. That's setting that angle, and we're lined up on this bottom cut line. Now we'll come in here and add our next one. Now here's where you gotta kinda eyeball just a little bit. You wanna make sure that your spacing from the back end of the tool across is the same on the front of the tool across, and your position forward and backwards, so that when you do the next one here, they line up and then you've got to check this make sure that that's about the same and that way they line up so as you can see there they're lining up across this one might take a little more practice to get the feel of it and it's not going to run quite as fast as that arrow style or even the straight one in my opinion but you want to be sure that you're if you need to turn that tool left or right a little bit to keep that spacing the same, go ahead and do that. It's, if you do it a little bit at a time, it's not noticeable. If you get into a bind and they're way too close together, it's very hard to correct that. And then we'll come back in here and keep going. Depending on the size of your stamp, you might get three, you might get four. It just depends on uh, how long the stamp is or how wide the stamp is. But with this little size here, it almost fits perfectly with three stamps across. So I got one, two, three, and it almost fits in there perfectly. Now, if you adjust your border a little bit, or something like that, or you're doing a little wider belt or a little narrower belt, that's going to change. So you just got to kind of keep that in mind when you're choosing which stamp you're going to use. Looks like this belt isn't quite an inch and a half, or this little scrap piece isn't the same all the way down the belt here. I'm having to lean this tool, but that's fine for this little demonstration. So as you can see there, it fit perfectly there, but then here I think this belt kind of has a little wave in it there. It's a miscut. It's come out of the scrap bin, so there's no telling kind of the width of it changed or something. But anyway, you can see how that does your, your angled one. A little bit more involved, takes a little bit more feel, but all in all, it's, it's, it's doable. It's not super complicated. It's just a matter of getting a little practice in, and we'll come down here with our K1 
camouflage of choice or shell border of choice. But there you go, guys. That's two different styles of basket stamp that just kind of adds to uh, another little option there, a little subtle difference. That, and a customer really will notice this uh, this style right here more than you think. Um, when we used to do a lot of belts like this, uh, a lot of people thought this was some kind of new stamp, some kind of different type of geometric, not realizing it's just a basket stamp run in a little different um, uh, situation here. But these are very popular. This one really looks good, too, on a tapered um, belt, like a, a one-inch taper. Um, really nice casual looks good on everything looks good solid black solid dark brown um, two-tone it just it just looks really nice so uh, two good options to add to your uh, toolbox there something you can make going to a trade show or something like that and uh, like i said these are some of clay's new basket stamps that he's making he's got a new process for creating these um, that sounded very interesting so if you want to visit with him about that and see some of the advantages of the way he's doing them now um, i've got a few of his old basket stamps um, here in my collection and they work great too so um, I, I think they're they're great tools he makes good good stamps so his link is down in the description of this video you can get in contact with him and uh, let him know you you saw him here and, and wanted to know kind of what he He's doing just to see what the advantages are and maybe get you a couple of those and try them out i think he's got a few different styles so i appreciate you guys watching and uh, be sure to go to dgsaddlery.com and sign up for the leathercraft newsletter and we'll see you all in the next video